So, hi to everybody. My name is Luca Pescaroli and I work at the UCL Institute for Risk and Disaster Reduction in London. I'm co-founder with Professor David Alexander of the research group on cascading disasters that was supported by the UCL Knowledge Sense Grant and it was a, an effect of an FP7 project named Fortress. So today uh, I will try to shortly explain of our cross-sectoral and multi-risk approach to cascading disasters. Um, the key point is that the context evolved a lot in the last 20 years. So uh, think about your life now and 20 years ago. Somewhere like 15 years ago, I was used to working in a small newspaper in the countryside, uh, leaving my articles to the editors in a floppy disk in his mail. Uh, now, if, if I walk around London without my GPS, I'm completely lost. If I don't have my Wi-Fi, what happens? What happens if I don't check the email? What happens to your life if uh, something like that doesn't happen? So uh, what happens uh, in the last 20 years is that the role of critical infrastructure intended as those, those assets or buildings that assure the vital services for the communities changes completely. And not only just that, because this was already something ongoing, but it changes completely the use we are doing of technology. So, which is the effect for disaster management, crisis management, and national risk assessment? Uh, normally, cascading has been associated with critical infrastructure disruption on the physical side, meaning like electricity goes down and brings something else down. And instead, uh, our approach is something slightly different. We approach cascading disasters to show that a primary trigger, like flooding, can cause a series of consequences uh, due to the highly networked infrastructure we are seeing and the highly networked society at large, that created secondary impacts and secondary emergency that can escalate. But the roots are in vulnerabilities in society. That means our society accumulates a series of vulnerability at different levels that contribute to the escalation process of these secondary emergencies. So critical infrastructure has one of the key roles in that, but not the only one, for example. Um, what we are saying is, uh, and what uh, we wish uh, that this natural assessment could bring to practice, is that it's not just a matter of toppling dominoes, not just a matter of consequences, it's a matter of escalation, it's a matter of a first punch that causes, that causes something that goes up instead of going down. In the picture you see now is probably what will show if you Google cascading disaster, it's the difference between how we were used to think disasters or kind of events that, for example, a flood leads to some consequences. Instead, what if something like a flooding causes something else that goes down and that becomes the primary center of what we have to manage, what we have to plan, and what we have to take on down? Uh, so I will make three different examples now, uh, two that are in the national risk assessment that we wrote, and another one that you will um, happening after that, um, the release. So you will see that it's very actual, it's a practical matter that affects everybody. It's not just a matter of low probability of impact events, it's something that is rooted in our society, is rooted in how we deal with emergency management and planning. So the most common uh, example of cascading disaster and cascading event is the triple event that stuck unfortunately in Japan in March 2009. We have a first earthquake that caused a terrible tsunami that impacted on all the infrastructure, and then the Fukushima meltdown. What do you remember? Do you remember the earthquake, the tsunami, or the Fukushima meltdown? In the short term, for sure, um, the tsunami made, made a lot of damages. And the earthquake, luckily, the preparedness of Japan that was incredible, moderated, mediated a lot the damages. But what happened in Fukushima, due to a different accumulation of vulnerability that was showed by the National Diet of Japan in the report was something that will be long-lasting, that affected something that was completely on the other side of the world, like the election here in Italy and uh, the referendum about the nuclear power supply. And it will be extremely long-lasting, it will affect generations and generations. So cascading can be something that goes much beyond any kind of border, any kind of jurisdiction, and affect something that we cannot see immediately the connection with. Um, 
Think about then um, the 2010 eruption of the volcano Eyjafjallajökull. Like, I could I hope I pronounced it right, but anyway, this event was something that could be kind of seen. Uh, there were precursors in Second World War. The longest number, the highest number of bombers that were stuck in Second World War by for the U.S. Army was caused by an eruption of Vesuvius and. You know, Iceland was not so far from the U.S. where uh, from the U.K. where there were so many airports. But what happened? It was something that was not even a national risk assessment, and caused the, uh, the biggest transportation disruption, air transportation disruption since the Second World War. The key problem was just the ash cloud, or was the, the fact that, well, as you see in the second picture, uh, the ash cloud impacted on an area where there was a, the, a, a very huge number of highly interconnected cities with high interconnected infrastructure and the consequences of that was worldwide. We have a student that was stuck in Hong Kong for that. So which were the consequences of society? Was just the primary trigger or was what happened next? And how to plan and prepare for that? Do we have to plan just to dash? But this is very important, clearly the forecasting way to deal with an, an early warning system are essential, but how we plan to mitigate the disruption in society and the escalation of those secondary emergencies that came up. Something that is happening right now, and is not in the report, for example, is what happened after you can read in Puerto Rico. I guess everybody knows what is going on now. Of the um, six weeks without power supply, it changes completely the society in Puerto Rico. But even in this case, was Hurricane Maria just a problem or the problem is what happened next with the disruption of power supply. So uh, right now what is happening is clearly affecting all levels of society, uh, including healthcare, including every single action done every day. So how to plan for that? How to integrate the mitigation of this kind of event in national uh, risk assessment? Uh, so, um, our research shows also that there can be an effect on a national, international relief. The disruption of critical infrastructure, for example, can have direct and indirect effect. Um, direct effect intended as the disruption of services like the failure of power plants that brings to lack of water and we need, for example, water bottled to be sent away. And indirect effects like hazards, like what happened in Fukushima, that a nuclear power plant leads to contamination and we need those geometers but also other things like the intangible effects on cultural heritage. So we need a new way to approach this problem with new data set and new studies that can help us to create, to understand better the effects and how to manage them. So in practical terms, uh, we can argue that there are some strategies for managing cascading that, that needs to be adopted and that's what we hope to help with these guidelines. So cascading are complex events we don't have, we cannot focus anymore just on the trigger. We cannot focus anymore just on the flooding, on extreme space weather events that stuck, everything else, or whatever. We can assume that there is something that we cannot know that sooner or later we come up. Uh, we need to understand, for example, with sectoral disruption to start to use broader impact analysis, impact trees, and adapt our scenarios in planning. So it's not what happens if, what happens if, which is the worst case scenario, which is the disruption of society we can have, and how to manage that. Which could be the escalation point, which are the carrying capacity of our system, and how to deal with that. Emergency management, um, enterprises, and government. Which are the vulnerabilities that can we address before the, the events happen, and how, which trust tests we can use, it, bringing together the expertise of engineering, social science, and planners. We need different dialogue between uh, disciplinary fields, between responders, critical infrastructure provider, and academia. One of the key problems in addressing Cascade is that the people involved often don't talk among each other. Um, in the guidance we address also, we indicated some methods that are already in place to help this process and facilitate it. And, and at the end, we need definitely to adapt policy and planning to take account of the possible cascade. This is something that modifies a lot, whatever we do. It's not just about, about thinking that life losses can be caused by the primary trigger. Life losses can be caused by the disruption of services 
and how society deal with this disruption of services and how government and emergency planning answer to that. So uh, we recently um, released with the, uh, the London Authority, London Resilience, uh, a short example of guidelines can be supported to this process and I'm showing it there because uh, it was done after the guidelines uh, the, uh, on national risk assessment. So just to give an idea on how, for example, why direct required power failures can cause directory to life, in directory to life, and challenges operational capacity at all, at ho as a whole. So if you are in an organization that works on emergency management, the question is that it's not just do you have the generator, but which are the consequences does the generator cause on your organization if you have the expertise and which could be the vulnerabilities that brings you not to use the, these critical generators. Uh, for example, if you have a contracting, a contractor, maybe this generator is on, on the other side of the world. So planning for complexity includes a lot of flexibility and, about, and the whole goal is to increase the adaptation capacity on emergency management, planning and national risk assessment as a whole. So I hope uh, this short introduction will uh, um, help you to be more curious about our contribution and to have more questions. Please do get in touch and I hope uh, it was for your interest. Thank you.